We will begin this tutorial by opening our Rhino model. Um, you may choose to make your own model or use SketchUp, but I have downloaded a pre-existing model from CAD Mapper. Uh, if you'd like to download a model from CAD Mapper, you can follow the directions in tutorial one and just select Rhino instead at the export option. So the first thing we're going to do is select the perspective view. And to be able to better see our model, we'll go to view and select either pen or shaded. Shaded will give us this grayscale. And then if we select pen, it'll have more of that wireframe look. I prefer this a little bit more. It won't matter ultimately when we export because it will come out as simple line work. Next, we will begin selecting any objects that we'd like to delete around the main image that we're focusing on or the main diagram or the set of buildings we'd like to highlight. So I'll delete any of these surrounding structures. And to really zoom in on our model, get a little bit closer, we can select the magnifying glass and drag in and out to zoom. And then to rotate this view, you can either select the rotate option from the toolbar. What I like to do is sorry, simply right click and hold and move it around that way. It's a little bit easier to toggle that exact view. And you can do this very easily and conveniently just by right clicking. Um, so first I'll go ahead and select these buildings. I'm gonna hold down the shift key to hold, to select many at once and select delete. What you can also do is click and drag. If you click and drag down to the left, you'll select any object just by selecting slight line work on the object. So if you click and drag left, you'll already have those entire objects selected. If you click and drag right, you won't, unless you're entirely covering an object. So if I do entirely cover those two, they will be selected. Just to keep in mind, going left is always a little bit easier if you're trying to select multiple objects at once. Now that I've cleaned up this diagram, I'm going to save this particular view. So I'd like to be sure that I can come back to this exact perspective of the buildings in the future. And any future movement won't prevent me from doing that if I do choose to save this view as a setting. I'll go to the command bar and typed in named view. And hit enter. You can also access this named view by selecting the camera icon on your right side panel. So I'll select the plus symbol at the bottom and I'll just name this perspective one and hit apply. And now you can see on the right here that we do have this view saved. And if we choose to change it, if I were to go back to rotate and select this view instead, I can again add an additional view and say perspective two, apply. If I go back and double click on one, it'll take me exact back to that exact camera view. So now I will have to make this 2D before taking it into Illustrator to be sure that I don't have to be cleaning up all of this 3D line work. If we were to export right now, we would get all of the inner building lines on our Illustrator document and it would be very tedious to clean up and also a little bit harder once we want to start coloring and showing shadows. So I'll type into the commands bar here make 2D, enter, and you'll have to select the objects that you'd like to make 2D. What I'm going to do is select all of these buildings. I don't think I'll need the roads, but I'm keeping those right now for context. And I'll select enter. You'll get this pop-up box and everything looks good for now. We want to make sure that we do have the view projection we want those hidden lines, so those will show the inner lines, um, but they will be on a separate layer, so we'll be able to hide or bring those back if we want to use them, and they will also show up in Illustrator as a separate layer. If you'd like to show those tangent edges, so on those curved or oval sides of buildings, um, it'll still show the wall lines, but I'll take those off. It might be a little bit too much information for this purpose, um, but you can toggle these on and off depending on what you're interested in. I'll select apply. And if we look back in our layers panel now, we can see that there are make 2D layers that have been added. And all of these are visible as of now. You can see that it's been added to the plane, but it looks differently. So what we're going to do first is turn off our original layers. 
you may have to deselect the current layer to turn it off. We'll go to TV and turn both of these off. And now we'll go back to the top perspective. So next to perspective one, we'll double click on top and again, change that view. So it's a little bit easier to see pen or shaded again, whatever you prefer. And here we have our new diagram. If we wanted to hide those inner lines, we can turn those off and on here. Um, I'm gonna keep them on for now, but at this point we are ready to export to Illustrator. So I will go to File, Export. If you are only choosing to select a certain part of your model or a certain building in a larger uh, site analysis scale, you can choose Export Selected by either doing that click and drag or a single select of an object with your mouse. Export. And here we want to be sure that our option of what type of program is Adobe Illustrator. There's a lot of options here where you can move these into separate programs. I haven't tried using PDF, so I would recommend using Adobe Illustrator, saving that into your desired folder. I don't believe we need to save textures. We don't want any of these background images or any uh, model textures to export to Illustrator. We'll just keep geometry and the plugin data. Select export. And here everything is okay. Be sure that you do have order layers selected. We wanna be sure that we have those layers in the same order as we do here. So it's a little bit easier for us to understand and export again. Great, now we'll move over to Illustrator. When I open my diagram in Illustrator, I'll see that there are these dashed lines that show the inner hidden lines from our buildings. On the right side in our layers panel, these have already been set up for us because we chose to export the layers. This first one will say hidden, which means that those inner lines can be turned on and off. I'll turn them off for now. And we still have those building structures here that look exactly as they did in our Rhino model. Um, so at this point, you can begin um, messing around with the colors, playing a little bit more with massing if you wanted to add additional stories to any of these buildings, um, showing shadows. The first thing that I'll do and demonstrate is how to show those shadows. I'll lock these two layers so I don't affect anything that I've downloaded. Add a new layer titled Shadows. And what I like to do is turning on the pen tool and you can simply go directly to these anchors of our existing structures. Your pen will snap to those corners in Illustrator automatically. And I'll just draw around there and make sure that entire face is selected. I'll just swap these two to create the back fill, sorry, black fill. And then in the color picker, I'll adjust that slightly lighter to be sort of a shadow color. And there we have it. As you can see that the line is a little bit blurred, you might want to add also that black outline to stay consistent. Now that I've added shadows to every single structure in this diagram, it looks slightly more realistic. And you have to be sure to be consistent when adding shadows. If you are choosing to put one shadow on one side of a building, you do have to apply that same shadow on that same side of every single building that's shown in your drawing um, to make it slightly more realistic and to keep consistent throughout. At this point, I can continue by adding more colors if I wanted to show building structures, um, connectivity between these buildings, if they share a sewer system or electricity. Um, this is a time where you can add those and choose to keep either this grayscale and add just color drawings on top, or if you wanted to, add textures within this as well. It's up to you at this point. Um, but these are the basics of setting up a massing diagram from Rhino into Illustrator.